What's going on? This is Big G from G Riders and welcome to another episode of Tessie Riders. Today, I'm going to be testing out the 2018 Lincoln Navigator L. Welcome to the 2018 Lincoln Navigator. The Navigator was originally introduced in 1997 and it was the first of the American full-size luxury SUVs. And since the launch of this SUV, the Escalade came out a couple years later in 1999 and the Lincoln Navigator was always in constant competition with the, with the Escalade. So let's fast forward a couple more years. So when the Escalade got redesigned back in 2002, it kind of robbed the, the Lincoln Navigator of all of its, of most of its sales. and the Escalade has kind of held that throne for for the last like 10 years or so until let's fast forward to this 2018 model year Lincoln Lincoln finally came back with some heat with this new Lincoln Navigator put this thing on a new platform making this thing a little bit lighter than, than it was before giving it more horsepower and giving it more luxury thus making this beautiful Lincoln Navigator you see behind me so this is the 2018 Lincoln Navigator L L meaning this is the long wheel base of the Navigator so this is the suburban variant of the Tahoe. So you get your third row and you get usable trunk space. And this bad boy is not the cheapest car in the world because of course it is a Lincoln and it can, this car can't go up to hundred grand. But this particular one I have here is not the $100,000 model. So what you get across, across the whole entire lineup is this twin turbo V6 making 450 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. This bad boy weighs a luxurious about 6,000 pounds or so. Since this car is about 6,000 pounds, it only gets about 16 in the city and 22 out on the highway, which for you know a 6,000 pound luxury SUV with this amount of comfort, it's not too bad, but I'm pretty sure the Escalade gets a slightly better gas mileage than that. So like I said before, the Select is the base model of the Lincoln Navigator. So, you know, the, the word base model typically means that the car, that it's the cheapest version. Yeah. This is the cheapest version, but the cheapest version of the Lincoln Navigator starts at a whopping $81,000. Since this car has only one option on it, the Panoramic Sunroof, which if you're gonna get this car, that's definitely a must. This car is about $85,000. And for $85,000, you get a lot of, of good standard equipment. Like you get a you get a variety of luxuries inside. You get this nice, beautiful exterior. You get, you know, a, a, a full-size luxury vehicle for 85 grand and you know because this car is a long wheelbase model I definitely do I definitely would say that this is the better deal than the shorter wheelbase one just because you're gonna get your third row and you're gonna get your trunk space but so like I've said before this car is very luxurious but most of that luxury is inside of the car so let's go ahead and hop inside and see what it's looking like Keep Welcome to the interior of the 2018 Lincoln Navigator. The Lincoln Navigator's interior is so much different than any Lincoln Navigator before it. It's so much more luxury, it's so much more modern, and it's so much higher quality. So let's come on in here and let's take a look and we'll see what this thing is looking like. Welcome to the interior of the 2018 Lincoln Navigator. When you first hop in this bad boy, you can definitely tell how much more contemporary this car is over the model it replaced. And it's very different from any other of the Lincoln models because like, the one thing that I did notice about the 2018 Expedition, even though it's, it's a great car, it feels just like a Ford F-150 on the inside, but in an SUV form. But this is just so much different than any of the Lincoln products. This is definitely even more different than the, even the Continental is. So kind of over here, you know, as you expect for it with an $85,000 car, all the materials are nice and soft touch. You don't you, you have to look very, very hard to find cheap plastics or anything. And even with that hard searching, you really don't find any. So where I rest my arm up here to, to drive, it's nice and soft, of course. The dash is nice and soft. It has this nice black stitching. Um, like, and one of my favorite parts about the interior is this 
just the tastefulness of the matching of the, the gloss black trim with the with the chrome with the polished chrome type of look and then this nice beautiful brown wood i'm not i'm not 100 sure if this is real wood or not but it whatever it is it looks it looks beautiful 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 and you get your wood here in the center console. I like how the how it kind of separates there in the middle. And you have your drive select mode here in the middle. So here you have your electronic parking brake, your auto hold, and your automatic start stop off, and then your parking, your parking your, your parking sensor is off. And the knob here is a nice little it's like it's a nice knurled aluminum type of knob here, and it changes your different driving modes, and we'll talk about those in the driving portion. So just like in the just like the drive select mode, your your fan your fan speed and your knobs for your volume and your tuning for the radio is also in that same has the same finish as that. And then you got these nice little beautiful toggle switches for your temperature control for your climate control. And one thing that I'm I'm really glad that Ford did with this model is they cut down on the amount of buttons that the car has. Like all previous model, all previous Ford models had way too many buttons. Way way too many buttons. I think I counted on the Explorer and it was somewhere like 50 buttons or something like that. And I'm glad here that they didn't do the most and they cut down on all those buttons. Here, the, if you hop in the Lincoln Navigator and you wonder how you put this bad boy in drive, it's a little bit different than most other vehicles. Lincoln has been really heavy on the push button shifters, but on the Lincoln Navigator, they kind of moved into the center console here. So you have your, your four different toggle switches for your different park, reverse, neutral, and drive. And this car does have a little, has a little manual mode and on the steering wheel, there's some steering wheel mounts and pedal shifters on there, which I think it's, it will be typically inappropriate for a full size SUV like this to have that. But since you don't have anything else, it, 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 it works. I'll give it a pass on that. So let's move up, let's move up past that. And we got, we have right here in the center, right under the, the floor and hazards, we have the surround sound camera system. So you, it has different modes. You can change what you want to see mainly. You can split it up so if you're pulling out of a parking like out of a parking lot and it's kind of blind you can put the nose up a little bit and see what's coming from each side that's nice little fish eye there or you, or you can just go back to the 360 and there's two cameras in each mirror there's one in the front and one in the back which is nice an $85,000 SUV needs to have that all right let's go ahead and turn that off so now I direct you to the big huge 8 inch sync 3 system here so one Sync 3 is way better than any of the previous sync systems. I'm not going to talk about that because I've talked about that enough in previous videos, but it works just as well in this car. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you know, 360 camera system. I mean, I don't think there's really anything different or new this car that this car has that the other cars don't accept. One cool little feature is if you're looking down here at the climate control, and you figure out how to, like, you know, how do you turn it off, how do you adjust everything, you actually hit this menu button here, and then up on your screen here, you get all your different commands for, you know, heat steering wheel, defroster, all that stuff. So, I think that's pretty awesome here. So, moving past the center console, this car has this nice, continuous wood finish that goes behind the dash and goes all across into the passenger side. And it looks great. It's the same, same wood that you get over here. It, you know, and it has a little bit of gloss black trim just for a little bit of contrast. And I think so it worked very well. And then it also has this little chrome strip that runs all across the middle. This car is definitely high quality. It feels a lot more contemporary. It feels a lot more higher quality. It feels like it definitely may be worth this the $85,000 $85, price point that this car has. So let's direct you up to right above the screen. So this car has the Revel sound system, which honestly sounds, it's probably the best sounding Lincoln sound system that I've heard so far. It doesn't have a lot of deep bass, but just the range of the sound system itself, it's, it's pretty good. It's this very dynamic sound system, and I don't think it's a sound system that is good as an $85,000 car, $85, car should have, but it's, it's, it, it does the job well enough. So, before I forget, there are USB ports and a wireless charger for your phone in the center console here and you got some nice big cup holders over here on the side. All right, let's see how this thing drives. All right, 
welcome to the 2018 Lincoln Navigator driving portion. All right, let's get on the road and see how this bad boy handles. First thing that you, first thing I noticed when getting out on the road in this big, in this big boy, is this thing definitely got some power and torque to it. Like I said before in the in the earlier part, this thing has 450 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. 500 foot pounds of torque. That is quite a bit, but this bad boy does definitely need it. So, what you're probably wondering is how does this thing handle on the road here? On the road, this thing is very well mannered. It's very comfortable the suspension is very comfortable it doesn't feel too big and wallowy and it's extremely quiet like what you expect from a car that costs eighty five thousand dollars but you know there's there, i had a couple surprises with this car so you know this car does have like it's have like it's different drive modes so i'm gonna flip through them here so we got normal I, i'm in normal four-wheel drive right now they're slippery for like snow conditions and there's deep conditions that's like deep snow and mud assist so you know if you're in trouble like that's the one that you use so I'm gonna go ahead and then they have conserve which is basically the eco mode of the 2018 Lincoln Navigator and then I'm gonna go over to excite which is the sport mode so one thing that I one thing that was kind of surprising to me is, is kicking this thing over into kind of the sport mode is it actually stiffens up quite a bit like it goes from just cruising over the bumps just floating down the road like you're on a magic carpet until you know this thing actually gets a little bit stiff which is actually kind of cool <laughs> Jesus Christ this car is quick but I'm gonna go, some, go around some corners soon and, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So this car does have the 10 speed automatic like all the other newer Ford vehicles do. And it shifts through the gears pretty quick. It shifts through the gears pretty smoothly. It's not like quick or nothing. This car's not meant to do all that, but it's, it's extremely smooth. And the paddle shifters actually, you get some decently quick you get some decently quick shift times actually for this being a full size luxury SUV. And it's actually, it's, actually surprising driving around, driving around in this Lincoln Navigator it, it's just it's such an ex, such a exquisite riding and driving vehicle what do I mean by that so like I said before this is a 6,000 pound luxury SUV so you know there's a couple things that come with being a 6,000 pound luxury SUV so you know when, when you're in a big luxury SUV you, you don't expect the vehicle to go around any corners you, don't ex you, you expect the car to be very hard to drive and maneuver in parking lots and you expect the car to get atrocious fuel economy so not to my surprise since I've driven the you know 2018 link the 2018 Ford Expedition and that car is great too this Lincoln Navigator actually does actually kind of changes the way you know a big full-size SUV drives so let's let's first talk about kind of the kind of the maneuverability of this vehicle so this vehicle is definitely very easy to maneuver yes it's this thing I'm not this thing is big like really big but because you have your 360 camera and the, and because of the the steering wheel is a little bit smaller than the one you get like in the Ford trucks and like even the Ford Expedition it makes the car feel look, feel feel like it is feels like it's easier to maneuver which is definitely a great trait for this vehicle to have especially with this being the long wheelbase this thing is quite big and long so so what about the fuel economy so on average, so this vehicle gets 16 in the city and 22 out on the highway. On average, I've, and the average that I've that that I've been getting in this car is about you know like 18 18.5 miles to the gallon, and that's with a little bit of highway, but mostly city driving. And honestly, it's not that bad. Like I've been, and I've been kind of driving a little bit hard, just kind of to put it through its paces to see how it accelerates and handles and things like that. But it's it's been doing a great job so far. Ooh, that's bright. 
it's been doing a great job and you know you expect a full-size SUV to get terrible gas mileage and you know I can I can happily report that this gas mileage is way better than it's way better than it was before so I never I didn't I never filmed a video on it but I I have driven a I drove the 2016 Lincoln Navigator kind of long kind of long distance I did some freeway driving and that one was a two-wheel drive model and that thing struggled I mean struggled to get 17 miles a gallon on the highway and it was just like I said it was a two-wheel drive it wasn't even four-wheel drive or nothing and long wheel base navigator actually weighs about as much as the short the, the short wheel base navigator did in the last generation so definitely some big savings so all right let's take this thing out see how it accelerates So, so kind of hammered on this thing. It actually is pretty. It's pretty comfortable. Still pretty comfortable to drive. I mean, of course, if you start pushing too hard, it, you you are reminded that this this is a this is a large SUV, and you know you shouldn't really forget that in this vehicle. But the way that the way this thing accelerates and just like the size of the steering wheel, like I talk about a maneuverability, it makes it so you can kind of drive this thing a little bit hard. And like in this excite mode, it's not very floaty over the bumps. It actually feels like there's some communic there's some communication that you can kind of feel between the steering wheel and the wheel and the front wheels, which is pretty good. And um but in the other mode you're completely isolated from the road, which is something an eighty-five thousand dollar vehicle should do. But driving along here, it's a comfortable ride. Like I didn't expect this car to not be a comfortable ride. I mean, it's, it's a navigator, and it's quite. It's I, I quite like it. So. One biggest thing for me is like one thing I wanted to talk about in this video because you guys seen the video I did do a review of the 2018 Ford Expedition. I wanted to see how this compares to a Ford Expedition and to be honest It's It's better way better like you would expect Yes, you would expect this car to you know, this has a bigger this has a higher premium over the Ford Expedition and so you expect this car to be better and I can report this car definitely is better than a Ford Expedition so it definitely it has more horsepower more torque it's a lot more luxurious it's a lot more isolated from the road and they threw in they threw in the simple fact that this car that they, they threw and what I like is they also threw in this the the little feature that they make that this big SUV actually can handle well if you are wanted to kind of drive it hard which is quite surprising so is this is this Lincoln Navigator worth the premium over an Expedition just like I kind of said when I reviewed the Escalade when I reviewed the Escalade two years ago this car definitely is worth the premium over its standard counterpart so this definitely is worth the premium over Ford Expedition mainly because it's way more luxurious it's just what it's it feels like it's built even better than the Ford Expedition because there there were some cheap plastics in that car but there are none in this car at all the sound system, the sound system is better the, the infotainment the infotainment sync 3 system works well it has the panoramic sunroof yes you can get that you can get all, all this stuff in the Ford Expedition but there's just something more special about driving this Lincoln Navigator like I'm not I'm looking around the car and I'm not seeing too many buttons and switches that match the exact same ones that you will find in an Expedition except only ones that really match is the buttons for the the, the windows and the the windows and the mirrors but other than that all everything in here is di completely different than what you will find in an expedition looking inside this interior and seeing what this beautiful interior looks like this definitely can justify the premium over the Ford Expedition that you have to pay in order to step up to this level I mean you know the seats are comfortable the only issue that I do have about with this interior is a simple fact that it doesn't have cooled seats I mean it's $85,000 cars should have cold seats and also it doesn't have any like front-end collision stuff like I understand that um, th you, you can option a package to get that stuff but this one doesn't have it at all and I think that it, at this price point it should so I mean that's just some small gripes with, that I have with the car 
the 2018 Lincoln Navigator is an exquisite luxury vehicle and it definitely kind of changed the game for the full-size luxury SUV in this like all the SUVs in this market the Escalade this does compare very well to, to the Escalade but I think this is better to the better than the Escalade just because it does feel just a little bit more modern and a little bit higher quality and a little bit more exquisite than the Escalade feels at this point I mean, just like looking looking all around the cabin in here, this is def this definitely gets the most improved award from you know doing a redesign doing a redesign sits. I mean, everything you touch is high quality, and everything you look at looks like it's quality. And that right there is kind of what a luxury SUV is is about. And also, you know, feeling special when you're driving it and seeing it, and walking up to it. And this vehicle definitely. To checks all those boxes so you know if you're looking for a full-size luxury suv you definitely should, you definitely 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 should take a look at the 2018 lincoln navigator